Hi, and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, we're going to work on finding the equation of a tangent line at a given point. Now, one important thing to note here is that we're going to use the difference quotient in order to do this entire process. So I'm going to assume that you know nothing about derivatives, and we're not going to use any of that information just yet, okay? So we're going to do lots of limits and the difference quotient. All right. So the idea behind finding a tangent line at a given point is that, you know, maybe we have some sort of function like this down here. And somewhere along that line, there is a point. So what we're interested in doing is finding the equation of the tangent line that goes through that given point. Now, when you're doing something like this graphically, you know, it's not too bad to just get a, a good sketch of this. We want to get the entire equation, so we're going to go through an algebraic process. Here's what we're going to need to do to uh, find this tangent line. First, we're going to use the difference quotient in order to find the slope of that tangent line. So we'll have to compute the limit of the difference quotient right here. Now notice in blue, this x here is the x from our given point. Now once we're you know, done computing that limit, then we're going to use the point slope form of line to actually build the equation that we're looking for. And then the last step, we usually take that and write it into slope intercept form. As I go through my example, watch for all three steps, okay? Because we'll go through each and every one. All right, so here's my example. We want to find the equation of a tangent line at the given point. So here I have my equation, uh, negative 3x squared minus 2, and we're looking for the tangent line at the point for negative 50. So in order to start off this process, we need to figure out, well, what is the slope of the tangent line at this given point? So we're going to borrow uh, the limit of our difference quotient for this guy. So let's go ahead and just write it down, okay? So we're looking for the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x1 plus h minus f of x1 all over h. All right, and like I had highlighted on the previous slide, we want to substitute for this x1 our value of 4, because that's the x we're using in our point. So the limit as h goes to 0 of f of 4 plus h minus f of 4 all over h. Okay. And now we have to take all of this information and actually substitute it into our, our function or into our equation. So wherever we see an x, we're going to replace it with a 4 plus h. And then we're going to do this again. Everywhere we see an x, we're going to replace it with a 4. So watch how I carefully do this. So the limit as h approaches 0. Nothing has changed there. So now I'll have negative 3, and I'm, I'm coming across that first x. So we'll put in a 4 plus h. Okay, that x was squared, so we'll square that, minus 2. So this entire part uh, is being taken care of the f of 4 plus h. Now we need to subtract, and we'll put in the 4 into the function as well. So negative 3, we'll put in the 4 for x squared, minus 2, and all of this is over h. So you can see that we have a lot to simplify, but I'm just being very, very careful as I plug things in. Also, make sure that you put brackets or parentheses around the second part. That will help us uh, to remember to distribute that negative sign or that we are subtracting this entire second part. All right, let's continue on with this problem. So I've copied down that same thing. Uh, now we just need to simplify a few different parts to it. So the limit as h approaches 0. Uh, let's go ahead and FOIL this out right here. So our first terms would be 16 from the 4 times 4. Uh, outside would be 4h, inside would be 4h. So those would combine to give us an 8h. And our last terms would multiply and give us an h squared, minus 2. So haven't done a whole lot, just foiled out those parentheses. Let's keep going. Minus. Now we'll work inside these brackets here. Uh, let's see, 4 squared, 16. And all of this, still over h. 
Okay, so we're getting a little bit better. It's getting a little bit simpler. Uh, let's see what else we can do. Uh, I think I'll go ahead and distribute in this negative three inside the parentheses. Uh, make sure you distribute to all three parts in there. And then we'll go ahead and start combining things inside these brackets, make it a little bit nicer. So negative three times 16, that is a negative uh, 48. Negative three times eight, a negative 24 H, don't forget that H in there. And let's see, a negative three times h squared, negative three h squared. Okay, so that's not too bad. We still have this minus two on the end, we'll put that in there. Now minus, negative three times 16 will be that minus 48. And then a minus two still in there. And now it's getting a little bit simpler, all over h. All right. So let's distribute this negative sign right here into both parts. And then we'll really be able to start canceling a few things out. So equal the limit as h approaches zero. Negative 48 minus 24h minus 3h squared minus two. Okay, so as we distribute it here, a minus and a minus sign will give us a plus 48. Distribute here, give us a plus two, all over h. All right, and now things are looking pretty good. Notice how we have a minus 48 and a plus 48, so we'll cancel those guys out. We have a minus two and a plus two, so we will also cancel those out. All right, let's just go ahead and write down everything that is left. So we have the limit as h approaches zero, the negative 24 h minus three h squared all over h. Now we're getting really close to where we can actually compute this limit. Notice how we haven't really done anything with it up to this point, because if I were to, to try and plug in the zero, it'd just give us a zero on the bottom. But we're at a, a key point right here. If we can factor out those h's in the top, we can actually cancel out an h and continue working with this problem. So let's do that. Again, I've copied down the problem. That way we can just really focus on factoring and actually computing this limit. So the limit as h goes to zero, factor out an h. Let's see, minus 24 minus three h all over h. So we've taken it out of both of those parts. And now we can get rid of the h on the top and on the bottom. So the limit as h goes to zero of negative 24 minus 3h. Now that we don't have to worry about making the denominator zero, we can simply evaluate this limit directly through substitution. So this will equal to negative 24 minus three, and let's plug in that zero for h. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Uh, negative three times zero is zero, so all of this collapses down and we have a negative 24. Okay, now that's a lot of work just to get us to this point, and we have to kind of take a step back and say, okay, what did we just find? All of this work was just to find the slope of that tangent line. So somewhere we'll go ahead and write down that the slope is a negative 24. Okay. Now that we actually have the slope of the line, we can use this information along with the point. Uh, that's the one at four negative 50 to go ahead and start writing the equation of the line. So we need uh, to take both these parts and put it into the point slope form of the line. So let's go ahead and do that. In the point slope form of the line, we'll put in our point for this y and this x, and that negative 24 will go right in for our slope. So the equation will be y minus the negative 50, remember that's the y value from the point, equals the minus 24 that we found, and x minus 4. 
Okay, so we've properly put in all of our pieces and we've essentially created this uh, equation of a tangent line. Now we'll go ahead and just go ahead and rewrite this into slope intercept form so that's a little bit easier to read. So I'll take these two negative signs, get a positive 50. And let's go ahead and distribute that negative 24 in there so we can combine just a few more things. So negative 24x plus 96. All right, almost done. Uh, let's subtract 50 from both sides. And we'll get y equals a negative 24x plus 46. All right, and now we're completely done. So this line right here represents the equation of a tangent line uh, at that point for, 50, uh, for negative 50. Well, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoy my videos. Uh, also look for this same process using derivatives. You'll see that it's a little bit easier. We don't have to spend quite as much time uh, figuring out that limit, uh, but you still end up using the point slope formula line. Uh, thanks for watching My Secret Math Tutor.